Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we're in that time of the expansion cycle where we get to look at all the new cards that are coming out for Rise of Shadows, the expansion that comes out on the 9th. So I already reviewed some of the cards in the expansion reveal video, but there's another seven for me to look at today, including a couple of legendaries. So let's get right into it and have a look at, first of all, a couple of warrior cards. This first one's called Improved Morale, and it's a one mana spell that deals one damage to a minion. If it survives, it adds a lackey to your hand. And there are five lackeys at the moment. Um, we've seen those already been revealed. And they're all one mana, one one minions with pretty interesting effects. Some pretty good effects as well. Now this card, um, first of all, if we just start with what the card actually does, dealing one damage to a minion. It is for the warrior class, and that is quite important to warrior. There's a load of different synergies with that. One, you can put it on a enemy minion and then use an execute. So it's a really good um, activator to kill a, a big minion if you've got an execute. But it, it can also activate a lot of powers on your own minions, so it can buff them, um, make them their attack grow, and that kind of thing. So we've seen before this kind of effect is pretty good in Warrior. And there is a very similar card called Blood to Ica, which came out in Whispers of the Old God Gods. That was a one mana spell, deal one damage if it survives, summon a 2 2 slime. So that gave you a 2 2 body instantly on the board. What this card is giving you is a lackey in your hand, which you have to pay one minute mana again to play. That one mana minion is a 1-1, one, one, um, has a 1-1 one, one body, and then a pretty powerful effect. Um, so to compare the two cards, Blood to Ica is obviously faster. It's, um, a lot, it's cheaper and you summon a 2-2 two, two body. But the effects of the lackeys are probably worth it to pay the extra mana for um, because they can be pretty powerful effects as well. Uh, one of the battle cries is summon a two cost minion, for example. So you could get something pretty decent there. But they are all random. Um, another lackey is transform one of your min min one of your minions into one that costs one more. So that we've seen could be a good or a bad effect. Um, so overall, this card I think will see play. I've, dealing one damage in uh, Warrior is very good. It can be very good in certain situations. It all just depends on how promising the lackeys are. And at the moment, when you look at the battle cries of the lackeys, I think they're they're pretty decent. So overall, uh, a pretty good card for um, Warrior. And I think it's probably on par with Blood to Ica, to be honest. And then if we look at the next card, this one is a very good card for Warrior, I think. It's a 4-mana four 4-5 four, mech called Omega Devastator. It is epic. And it's just for the warrior class. But the body of a 4-mana four 4-5 four, is good. Um, we know if you play that on turn 4, it's pretty decent. It's not nothing special, but it keeps you in the game. Um, the 5 health is very good against aggro decks. So, you know, you're going to do quite well to maybe get a couple of trades in with this against an aggro deck. But what this has is it has battle cry. If you have 10 mana crystals, deal 10 damage to a minion. So that is a huge effect um, to a 4-mana minion. Uh, and all you need to do is have 10 mana crystals. Now, in Warrior, you've got a lot of good AoE options. You've also got a lot of good defensive options. So getting to turn 10 isn't always a problem. So you potentially might not mind holding this in your hand. I mean, I said before, if you need to play it on turn 4, then it's fine. But if you need to hold it in your hand until turn 10, you get this huge effect. And the reason I think it's really good is because one, they made it a mech as well. Um, so it has all the mech synergies that go, so it will have rush if you play Dr. Boom. You can use magnetic on it. So these are all really good positives for the card. But dealing 10 damage to a minion as well, just it's basically um, an execute or a shield slam bundled into the minion. I mean, we, we talk about in Warrior how important execute and shield slam are. Well, this is just a big shield slam or a better execute because you, you don't really need any requirements to make it work and then it will have rush if you've got Dr. Boom out. So it's also a little bit of a buff to Omega Defend, um, not Omega Defender, Omega Assembly, which is the one mana spell that discovers three mechs. If you discover this from that, you've already got um, 10 mana crystals. Most of the time you will play that after ten, turn 10 and then you can play this as well on the same turn for 10 damage. Um, it's just really good. Uh, I can't really see many downsides. It buffs um, Dr. Boom as well, because his discover a mech mechanic can potentially discover this, which is something, and you're more than likely to be on 10 mana crystals when you play him. Um, I like it. Turn 10, if you've got Dr. Boom um, as your hero, turn 10, deal 10 damage to a minion, destroy it. This has rush, trade it in, and 
potentially you're doing 14 damage to the board so it's really really good um, not too many downsides in my opinion I think honestly if they made this a 4 mana 4-4 four, four mech um, with battle cry deal 8 damage if you had 10 mana crystals you might still see some play so I really do think this is um, something that will go into uh, maybe not even just mech decks it could also go into um, a standard warrior deck because it's good removal it's not the sort of removal you can rely on you, you can't leave it as your only removal because of course if you're playing against fast mid-range decks or aggro decks you're definitely going to need some kind of removal before turn 10 so that is the downside but like i said a decent card for for warrior um i'm pretty impressed with that one to be honest Next up we've got Refarm Scheme which is for the Warlock class, it costs 3 mana as a spell and it's also um, the scheme mechanic so it upgrades each turn and the effect is summon a 1-1 one, one imp, upgrades each turn. Now instinctively this looks terrible, um, 3 mana to summon a 1-1 one, one imp is not good. Um, it's also limited in terms of some of the other schemes we've seen in that you can only ever summon 7 1-1 one, one imps, um, some of the other schemes that deal damage etc can you could scale it past turn 7, whereas this, you you can only fill your board with 7 1-1 one, one imps. So that in itself, 3 mana to summon 7 1-1 one, one imps is good, but remember you have to, to you hold it in your hand until turn 7 to do that. Um, it doesn't really seem like a very powerful play to me. Uh, I've heard some people talk about potentially it being a zoo card, and yes, it, it is a zoo card, but... It doesn't seem like a particularly good one because Zoo doesn't want to have a card on turn one that it doesn't play for a number of turns. Um, that's just not how Zoo works. It's If you've got a card clogging up your hand, then you're ultimately not going to be putting the power on the board that you need. And if, it, if the game goes till turn seven, then you're kind of struggling, to be honest. Um, unless you've already won the game or in the process of winning the game winning the game by then it's difficult for warlock um or zoo warlock to keep going it, in the form that exists it, it exists on the ladder right now maybe um we'll see some other things that can improve it it does have some other kind of interesting synergies which again i'm not convinced are great but are synergies nonetheless and that is um spirit of the bat which is the shrine Whenever a minion dies, a friendly minion dies, give a minion in your hand plus one plus one. So this is an easy way to summon um, sort of expendable minions that you can trade in and buff minions in your hand. And of course you want to um, buff Hyreek the Bat, which then summons a bunch more minions. Um, so maybe it could be used in that way. Um, there's also Grim Rally, which is the one mana spell that gives you kill um, one of your own minions and give the rest of your minions plus one plus one. Well, this is a way to buff your other imps, but also summon a cheap minion that you could kill and buff whatever else you've got on the board. So it does kind of work with those cards. Um, I don't know, I feel like this might lean into some kind of archetype. There might be a card where we see, depending on how many imps have died, upgrade this card or whatever that we haven't seen yet. Because on the face of it, I don't really like um, this at the moment. I don't see it being that great to be honest because there is a game a card in the game fiendish fiendish fire um which is a four mana card summon four one one imps and it never saw play that was from um with the witchwood so i think it, it has obvious synergies and potential in warlock but at the moment i think we need some to see some more to be honest and next we have Oblivitron, which is a 6 mana 3-4 mech, um, a legendary for the hunter class, and it has death rattle, summon a mech from your hand and trigger its death rattle. So death rattle hunter is going to be going through some changes because they're losing play dead and they're losing terror scale stalker. So death rattle beasts won't really be a thing, but there are some ways to synergize and make it work with mechs. Now the downside, I'll talk about the downside first of this card. Katharina Winterwiss, one of the best cards we've seen for Hunter for... I mean, they've got a lot of good cards, but Katharina Winterwiss was a very, very powerful card. But that summoned card from your deck. It summoned minions out of your deck, so it pulls, draws the card, then plays it. This plays minions from your hand, and although it gets to trigger the death rattle as well, which is great, Hunter has a problem with card draw. Not a problem, but just their class doesn't draw many cards as an identity. So if you're pulling cards out of your hand, especially in a class that doesn't draw, I don't think this is going to be as good 
for something like Katrina was, which was very powerful, granted. So although there are a lot of new cards that could be released to synergize with this, let's just take a quick look at what already is available to Hunter and ones that won't be rotating out. And Fireworks Tech is going to be huge in any kind of Death Rattle Mech Hunter deck because it's a Hunter class card and it Battle Cry, give a friendly mech plus one plus one. If it has Death Rattle, trigger it. This is a very powerful effect and you could play it on the same turn as your Oblivitron. So your Oblivitron summons a minion from your deck, triggers it, um, triggers its Death Rattle. And, you know, you've used Fireworks Tech to get the advantage of that. Oblivitron's still on the board, so when it dies, it will still trigger another minion loads of good possibilities there spider bomb we already seen is an excellent card although it only costs three mana you're thinking if you're summoning that from your hand you're not getting much value you're summoning it killing a random enemy minion and keeping the spider bomb on the board for you to kill an enemy minion again so it's very powerful and that also synergizes with a fireworks tech too so there's loads of um kind of good ways that you could use those mechs in hunter already the card Oblivitron is susceptible to silence like all death rattles so skater bot is a way if you don't have the fireworks tech you could give it rush um, but this is a one mana one one card and I talked about your hand getting small after you played this well if you play a skater bot that's another card you have to pull out of your hand to make this combo work so I don't think that one's particularly great um, but unfortunately meat wagons rotating out that would be a good option um, that could be quite fun Kenyatta, you could get some good value out of. But other cards that would be good to pull, probably um, Damage Stegatron because you don't get the, the Battle Cry downside. Although you, it doesn't have a Death Rattle, pulling out a 6 mana 512 is pretty nice. Um, Mechanical Whelp obviously is a good target because you'll get 9 9 in stats with a potential 7 7 later on. And Ziliax on its own could be okay too. Like it, it doesn't have a Death Rattle, but it's still. 5 mana, cheating out, lifesteal, rush, divine shield and taunt. So there are also already some good options, but I think for this card to really be good, we would have to see some better um, better options, obviously, released into the game. And like I said, I just think Hunter, reducing the summoning cards from a Hunter's hand can be really difficult because they might find it hard to recover from that if, if you don't win the game by playing your Oblivion. So let's move on to the next card, which is a good legendary in my opinion. The power level is a little bit lower, but I, I'm quite pleased to see that um, a lot of the cards rotating out are extremely powerful. But this one is a 7 mana 5-5. Five, five. It's called a Swamp Queen Hagatha, a legendary for Shaman. Battle Cry, add a 5-5 five, five horror to your hand, and you teach that horror to Shaman spells. So this works very similarly to Kazakus, which was the 4 mana 3-3. Three, three. When you played it, you can create a spell, and then you can play that spell at a later time. In this case, you pay 7 mana to summon a 5-5. Five, five. Then you discover two spells, so you get to pick one of three twice. Um, and then you teach it to your horror, which costs 5 mana. So you can't play that on the same turn as you play Hagatha without cheating out some mana somehow. Uh, and then with the turn that you played the 5-5 five, five horror, it will cast those two spells that you discovered from Hagatha. So this has some really good options. Um, Bloodlust is one of them, obviously. Maybe you could discover Bloodlust twice in which case um, it would just give your minions loads of attack. But there are also some good AoE options. The scheme for um, Shaman as well is a good AoE option. So it, it, it can be really good. The problem is that Shaman does have some bad spells. You don't want to be discovering ice fishing. <laughs> um, unless you're playing a Merlot deck, of course, maybe that would work. But um, the fact that you can discover spells should help you to limit that. Um, now... The direct damage spells as well are targetable, so you can target it at who you want. So I think this one can be really good. Maybe we'll see some more powerful Shaman spells to go with it. Um, but a cool card, a really cool... Like, Kazakus was really fun. I really enjoyed that card. So another one that has a similar kind of um, mechanic is, is good to see. Next up is Lazul's Scheme for Priest. Uh, this is a zero mana epic spell. And so this is one of the schemes where your cards upgrade the longer you have it in your hand. So every turn, this will upgrade by one. And it reduces the attack of an enemy minion by one until your next turn. So, for example, if you if you hold it in your hand for one turn, it reduces the enemy's attack by uh, two. Then by three, then by four. So these sort of mechanics can be really good. Um, I think Paladin's got the best one with the Aldil Peacekeeper where you reduce the en enemy's attack to one. That's just huge because it kind of negates the threat of that 
minion but not only negating the threat it makes it gives you the option to do some really efficient trades with your minions and maintain your board presence so that's kind of what Lazul's scheme could be really good for and because it's situational like you need to wait for the right minion to play this on that kind of works in the scheme's favor because it's situational so you're not going to play it immediately so you could hold on to it for a bit longer um, and then upgrade its effect is it good enough i don't know uh, there are some really good things that priests can do with shadow word madness and also um, cabal shadow priests so if you reduce a minion's attack to two or below you can play a cabal shadow priest and steal it from your opponent then on the next turn its attack returns to normal so you can get a big minion um, and steal it from your opponent that could be pretty huge um, it wouldn't be very hard to steal a Malagos from your opponent because you only have to have the Zul scheme in your hand for one turn reduce Malagos from four to two then steal it with your shadow priest so there are some good options there but do you really want to put does this take up a slot in your deck I'm not sure um, it could also work in a divine spirit in a fire deck where you know, you steal um, a big taunt off your opponent and then double its attack and um, uh, and then use inner fire on it to kill your opponent. So that's another option, but not particularly exciting, but it could be a pretty good defensive and offensive option for, for Priest. Then finally for today, we've got Togwaggle's Scheme, which uh, I think this one's good um, in the right deck. It's a one mana spell, which I think is very important. And it chooses a minion, shuffles one copy of it into your deck, and it upgrades every turn. So let's just say you're playing Pogo Hopper, which is what this is kind of designed at. It's a good way for you to shuffle a bunch of Pogo Hoppers into your deck for one mana. So you could hold this hand in your hand for a few turns, shuffle a few Pogo Hoppers, and that might even be enough. Um, now, Rogue really does struggle with staying in the game a long time. So shuffling minions into your deck isn't always great because you don't see them for a long time well the fact that this is only one mana means that you can funnel it in a lot easier academic espionage is a great card which kind of was difficult to play because it costs four mana so the turn you play it you're taking quite a huge sacrifice to then maybe get some cards later which are quite powerful whereas with this it's only one mana and and it shuffles it so if your pogo hoppers on the board you don't lose that pogo hopper it just shuffles a copy of it into your into your deck now rogue struggles with healing like i said but in pogo hopper decks they do have zilliax that can magnetize onto a huge pogo hopper and you can basically do a reno effect and and gain loads of lifesteal back to full health so that sort of deck does potentially have the time for this but <clears throat> the problem is actually drawing this in time and then holding it for long enough to play at the right time when you want to play it it also has pretty good synergies with uh, Myra's Unstable Element because, of course, you can eliminate all the cards in your deck. Then you can shuffle a bunch of minions. Then you can play a, a Academic Espionage all for 10 mana, um, even less if you use prep. So whether or not this card is good or not, I think it has good applications. Whether or not it would be um, powerful enough is a different matter because Lab Recruiter is already in the game, and Lab Recruiter is a 2-mana, 3-2 minion. So you're only playing one more mana, you're getting a 3-2 body and you shuffle three copies which is quite a lot considering you'd have to hold togwaggle scheme for two turns to get to that point so um does it need to be played alongside uh lab recruiter i don't know but it does give you extra options to shuffle minions and just if you're playing pogo hopper you need to draw the pogo so this is just a great way to make it work so i think that could be really cool i'm definitely going to try out this card because i love the pogo hopper deck and you know the power level of the game is going to be coming down so maybe pogo hopper could have some time to really kind of kick itself um kick off and actually make a good deck out of it all right, guys, so that's all of the cards I've got to show you for today. I'm pretty excited. There's going to be more coming next week, so I'll fill you in with the cards next time on those videos. But let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.